Hi, you remember this uh, Sonos Play 5 Gen 1 speaker I found in the dumpster and it ended up working just fine and I did a teardown of this so I'll link it in down below and the build quality of these is actually quite excellent. The design and build quality, unfortunately there were tons of people in the comments who own their, one of these things and they said no it belongs in the dumpster um, and because Sonos are just evil in terms of like it, how they, uh, this Gen 1 product is not compatible with the new Gen 2 software and that's probably why it got uh, tossed out and then the software is a real pain in the backside to actually uh, get working so to get this Gen 1 working I do have to use the old Older obsolete Gen 1 software and then you've got to create accounts and you've got to do all sorts of things and even though it has a line in like this you have to actually register the thing first and then get all the software working get everything set up before the line in will work so even if you want to use it as a dumb speaker you like you can't just plug in like your shoe phone into here and then just have it work and this is what I want you know I want to use it down in the dungeon down there as a speaker I just want to plug my shoe phone into there and um and just have it work but it doesn't work you've got to set the stupid thing up you've got to give them all your details and they are oh, yeah you can create a throwaway account and all that no this is absolute garbage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hack this thing um to get rid of all the smarts out of it we're going to rip the guts out of it and then we're going to put in um hopefully some old-fashioned knobs in here and we can just get this thing working as a not just a dumb speaker but also as a uh, bluetooth speaker as well so let's go you, know, you could design your own amplifier to fit in here and everything but what i've got i just got this on ebay it was like 30 bucks or something and it's a fossy audio it's a zk tb21 it's a 50 watt uh, times two um, class d amp uh, plus it's uh, got a uh, subwoofer as well because this um, actually has one subwoofer in the middle plus uh, two two-way uh, speakers in here as well so it's got uh, line in and Bluetooth and uh, yeah we need a uh, DC uh, external DC uh, supply for it but anyway this is very nice it uses a uh, TI uh, chipset I'll put that up here now so if I was to design this myself this is pretty much what I would uh, actually design and would have used the same TI chipset or you know something uh, equivalent so yeah it's got a Chong X cap on it and we'll need a uh, crossover for the uh, two-way uh, speakers of course but uh, but check this out I think this might actually fit in there perfectly so yeah I just couldn't believe how painful this thing was and I did like do a factory reset on it now I can't get the stupid thing working even with the uh, Gen 1 software it's just ah oh, it's just so bad like and it's a shame because they actually make design and make decent quality hardware it's just a shame that they want to be Dr. Evil and uh, get all of your details and then brick your products I mean how many of these things have been bricked because you know it, it just doesn't work with the latest gen software or whatever it's just like it's unbelievable there are a couple of support posts here we'll have to take out but we've still got two mounting posts over here so the base can still screw back on yeah that's almost purpose designed for that and then we've got uh, another hole in the back for the audio jack, another hole for the uh, power supply. The power supply will have to be external unless maybe we could hack the internal power supply so that we can power it from its existing power supply over here. So this requires a uh, 12 to 24 volt input. So yeah, we should be able to get something like that out of the uh, existing Sonos uh, power supply. We might as well make uh, use of it. We'll just, we can just rip the rest of it out. I mean, once again, look at the attention to detail here. They went to the effort to have a little uh, clamp in there and they even molded that into the plastic. A little cable clamp, just so that that wire going over there wasn't flapping around in the breeze. Like, unbelievable attention to detail. In my teardown video, I said this is the Juicero of uh, Wi-Fi, you know, smart speakery things. And yeah, I, I stand by that. And they've got individual uh, rubber penetrators on there for each Wi-Fi antenna cable going through. Unbelievable. Ta-da! Oh, come on, there we go. 
And I've shown this before in the teardown, the acoustic design, they've got these sealed enclosures here. They've got all the foam over all the uh, cables. And then inside here, they've got the uh, dual ported um, horn port on this thing. Um, they're just absolutely fantastic. So anyway, um, I think, yeah, we might be able to tap off the mains power supply down here. And I've got Sagan here with me. Sagan, what do you reckon? Should I just take out all the smart stuff on here, which is actually, which is all the evil part of it. First, insert evil laugh here. Oh yeah, evil laugh. Okay, go. <laughs> Try and do a maniacal laugh. <laughs> that is an excellent impression of the directors of Sonos. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all so right, so depend, what do you think we should do? Depends what quality it is. Depends on the quality of the power supply. It looks pretty decent quality. Well, if it's good, then keep the power supply, rip out everything else. And plus, ripping stuff out is just way more entertaining. Yeah. Sounds like a plan? Good plan. Okay, so let's rip the evil out of this thing. Huge board-to-board -board interconnect in here. Totally forgot about the uh, whole bunch of screws on the bottom here. But there you go. We've still got the, uh, the soft power button on top here, but uh, we can rip all that out. Oh, that's tempting, isn't it? Knobs on the front or back. Oh, I wish I could do a live poll. I'm a live poll. What do you think, Sagan? Should I mount this on the bottom like this and have the knobs coming out the front? Like retro style? Like retro style, yeah. Or should I try and mount it in here, inside, and have the knobs sticking out the back there? I say the front is more accessible. Front is more accessible, you are right. Label them, but we do get to destroy the evil Sonos branding on the front. What do you think we should call it? Should we call it the Fronos? Free Sonos from its evil mm. captors? Yes. Fronos? <laughs> All right, Fronos. it's going to be called the Fronos. Now, the reason why we can't just mod the amplifier board here and just like bypass all the intelligence and just feed the signal directly in is controlled by a Cirrus Logic 44800 down here. And this is an I2S audio interface uh, chip. And then it's a PWM output uh, driving the audio, the discrete PWM audio section here. So it's not like we've got like an analog amplifier in this thing that we can just feed the audio signal into. Unfortunately, if you wanted to design something, if you, you know, to feed in I2S digitally, um, if you wanted to do that, but you know, look, it's not worth this amount of uh, design effort to actually do that. Anyway, there's all the evilness. It is gonski. Look at the design effort they went to for this, uh, just the power switch board up the top with this custom rubber grommet here to get the acoustic seal in there. Unbelievable! Like gilding the lily. There you go, we got out the entire Sonos PCB and I'll show you that Cirrus Logic down there and then all the five channel PWM. That's a discrete transistor solution over there driving the, uh, and there's the output caps and inductors and uh, the output filter in for the Class D. But the audio power supply out here, you know, it's got to be 12 to 24 volts, something like that. Does that help us? Voltage test points? Was the designer nice to us? No. Uh, we should be able to work this out by deduction. Look at this isolation here. They've isolated all of the mains supply over here from all the digital this is all digital ground plane here what is this device what is this six pin jobby a common mode choke there so aha i think that is the main voltage output so we could even desolder that and remove all of the power from all the stuff on this side here if we're not using it anymore right so let's actually uh, measure the voltage here of course all this stuff along here is all mains potential, so we'll use our patented tight takeaway protection mechanism here. I can physically see that the center pin is ground, it's to the ground plane, 25 volts, bingo, that's a volt above our 24 maximum, so I don't know what the absolute maximum is. And the other one, 11.6, so we haven't got <laughs> quite got the 12 to 24, but that's going to be good enough for Australia. Oh, curiously. You can see the Ernie Bernie mark there on the PCB where the uh, all the uh, five channels um, audio is just, that's where it's gotten hot, right? So there are our output uh, driver transistors on the bottom there, discolored. Cool, huh? 
Okay, that choke is gone, Ski, so we should be able to just wire into these two uh, caps here are in parallel. Jackon brand, <laughs> never heard of them. Anyway, 35 volt jobbies, they're in parallel, and they're the, uh, that's the 25 volt um, output. So just wire across that, and I did check the data sheet for the uh, TI uh, chip. It will accept up to 26 volts, so 25 volts, no problem. Let's just double check that, make sure there's no sense business uh, going on. Yep, 25 volts, no whackers. All right, that'll work nicely. And we've already got an existing hole, or multiple holes, we can feed down there as well. And we can acoustically seal those if you want to get all uh, audio foolery. So we'll just run the wire under the bottom there and through there and we can access, uh, and then we can wire that into the board on the bottom side. No wackers. Right, so now we have to clear space for our board to go in here. So we've got to uh, cut out those. You don't have to use the Dremel. You can get in there with a nice pair of uh, flush cutters. And then the bottom here, we have to actually remove these ones as well. Uh, they, they're a bit trickier. Someone was very unsure of the manufacturing date. Either that or somebody on the production line was bored. Whoa. There you go. Look at that Bobby Dazzler. It's almost like it's purpose designed. In there, there's plenty of height in there, no wackers, and I, oh, beautiful. And if you wanted to, you could actually uh, cut that off and just use that as a label plate on the front. And you could definitely choose either front controls or rear like that. I think front is better because, you know, you, you've got it sitting on a, a bench. You want to be able to adjust uh, the volume. You might want to be able to, you know, tweak the individual uh, responses. And that's actually got a clicky on off switch as well. It doesn't switch off the mains, but it at least uh, switches off the uh, power to the main amp down here. So yeah, I'm thinking front and then that will just fit in there nicely. It is curved though, unfortunately it's curved a little bit. So that's a little bit of an issue, but still, um, yeah, no worries. Unfortunately, we don't have enough room to get in there for that uh, Phoenix uh, plug really. So I'll just desolder that and uh, we can solder the wires directly into that later. Mrs. EEV Vlog has made an appearance. You think controls on the front? I ha could have controls at the back, but I think controls on the front. Are you on the front? Yeah, front. Front. Yep. As long as we keep these cool uh, tubular-like things. Cooler tubular-like, the cool tubular-like things. They are tuned ports. So they're the acoustic um, chamber. It works as a big acoustic ah. chamber. So they've got acoustic foam okay. and these ports are specifically designed to match the resonant response of the chamber and all that sort of thing. So why they look like a trumpet. Which is why they look like a trumpet. Yeah. Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank nice. you, Mrs. E of e Blog. I took care of that. Look at that. It's going to fit in there. Oh, practically, like almost to the millimeter. Oh, you can see there's not much of a curvature there. Like that's almost exactly the dimensions board I would have designed to actually fit in there. Incredible. Actually, I don't think I had to Dremel out that one. I think that would have been perfectly fitted between there and there. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe half a millimeter in it. I don't know, half a bee's dick. Free the Sonos. And I can desolder and use the front panel as a uh, drilling template. Nice. Yeah, that worked. I don't even have to have the holes, uh, the threaded part actually penetrate out because that is a perfect fit. That is not, that is not coming out at all. Beautiful. Now, unfortunately, the supplied knobs are these deep recess types and they don't fit on there. So the subwoofer here is uh, controlled by its own amplifier. It'll have its own low pass uh, filter for it. That'll be on the uh, PCB. So no worries, but we've only got the single left right speaker output. So we've got a, a two way speaker system here. So we need to uh, measure the impedance of the woofer and the tweeter here, even though we do have this, it's a peerless uh, 4 ohm jobby. It's, you know, it's reasonably decent. I Maybe the tweeter's a peerless as well. I don't know. Design a, a simple, just a first order Butterworth uh, crossover for it. So when you're measuring speaker impedance, you don't want to use your regular multimeter because, well, it's not measuring impedance. So, because the tweeter's the one we don't have specs on. The tweeter is showing 7.3 ohms. Now the woofer, is should show something under four ohms. Yep, three. It's not actually three ohms, uh, so we'll go for the nominal four ohm rating. So what we can do is we can actually use something a little bit better. So our LCR meter will be slightly better. Let's measure our woofer again. One kilohertz, 3.6 ohms, 
and that's actually going to change with frequency there at 10 kilohertz it's uh 8.8 .8. anyway we're going to run with the uh phenomenal four ohm uh impedance but the tweeter is the one that we don't know you can hear that one kilohertz we don't want one kilohertz either 10 kilohertz is about where a tweetery operates at 8.2 ohms eh that's good enough for australia we'll take 8.2 so if we go to an online calculator a two-way crossover none of that three-way rubbish now the frequency here i'm going to be using this mostly with audio like to listen to podcasts and videos and stuff so speech you want to, the crossover to be high enough to avoid uh the vocal frequency range so uh some studio monitors i've got here they avoid the uh vocal range and they're a 2.8 kilohertz crossover frequency so uh, 2.8 sounds all right you know three something like that now you've got a ton of options go in the comments down below come on flame away i'm just gonna go which is good enough for australia a first order butterworth you can go right up to a six order link which riley first order butterworth which is just going to be a series uh capacitor and a series inductor boom there it is there 6.9 microfarads that's close enough to the um 6.8 mic standard value and the inductor is uh, 230 micro henry's near enough to 220 something like that which is a standard anyway if you want to have a look at these these will all, all be like the first order will be the same it's just different uh values basically and if you want a second order butterworth then you have two capacitors and two inductors they're different values it gives you a more shaped uh response and then you can go to a third order butterworth you require a uh the two capacitors one inductor like that and a fourth order butterworth Oh, let's have a look at that two caps and two inductors thank you very much that's too fancy pantsy for australia if you go for a fourth order link with riley it's exactly the same circuit except it gives you a different response because you tailor the different values 6.8 mic cap it's got to be a non-polarized type so none of that polarized uh, rubbish and we just go for a 220 uh mic inductor no wackers and i don't think i'll be buying the metalized polyprop uh <laughs> I'm not that fancy pantsy, 14 bucks 50 each. No, thank you. I'll go for the non-polarized electro. And crossover caps, 6.8 mic. Ah, look at that. And if you want to see the physical difference in size between the electro, non-polarized, and the <laughs> polyprop, um, yeah, look at that. Wow. But uh, they're like 14 bucks a pop. No, thanks. <laughs> Right, so I've bodged in a series uh, cap with the tweeter and I've bodged in, I put uh, had to put two uh, inductors in series. I did that over there and over there. I'll gunk them all down so they don't like flap around in the breeze and everything. So no worries, I'll tidy that up. But uh, yeah, she should be good to go. So now all I've got to do is uh, extend the cable over here. I could uh, use a pin header, but I think I'll just uh, cut the wires and splice in some newies. Now I've got the left and right speakers and the subwoofer fed through and the power that's all we need one last uh, power polarity check before i plug it in we do get 25 positive excellent because winner winner chicken enough. dinner it's check it out it's connected to my shoe phone via the newfangled bluetooth and uh yeah you plug it in via the uh, headphone jack it works as well i've got uh, volume so it just clicks like that and click on it's a little bit hard to access i do need to get better knobs i actually filed these ones down so that they fitted so for the main drivers we've got the base amount of heat energy out there we go just really turn the base up turn the treble take out the treble you know for that guy with a real squeaky high-pitched voice and then we've got a subwoofer so i can adjust the volume for the subwoofer and the frequency of the subwoofer treble bass of the main drivers and main volume so we can connect directly via the input now or we can uh just connect via the newfangled bluetooth and of course the top buttons do absolutely nothing so there you have it we've freed our sonos from the evil software overlords i love it so hopefully this will encourage others to modify um their you know instead of tossing these things out a lot of people have said oh no it's just sitting on the shelf because it's not compatible with the bloody firmware or whatever it is and no screw that get it out put a new board in it like this it fits like a glove and uh, you can turn it into a totally independent system so yeah screw sonos but i'm sure there's some sonos fanboys yeah i got it and it's absolutely fantastic and i love it yeah, yeah stick it up yeah anyway if you like that video give it a big thumbs up as always discuss down below catch you next time Hello.